And welcome back to our community. This half, we are speaking with Britt Cooper, who is Director of Choruses for the Canton Symphony Chorus. Good morning. Good morning. First question, out of the box, what is different? We spoke yesterday from people from Vochi. Yeah. What's different with between Voices of Canton and the Canton Symphony Chorus? Mm-hmm. Canton Symphony Chorus is a unique ensemble in that it has a very finite mission, which is to sing uh, music that is concerted, music with orchestra. And uh, we sing exclusively with the Canton Symphony Orchestra. The The group does a couple of performances by itself during the course of a year, but the overwhelming majority of its uh, responsibilities are to sing in concerts with the Canton Symphony Orchestra, usually in Umstadt Hall. And so that gives us a very different mission than a group like Voci, which is sort of a standalone group that does a variety of different programs during the course of the year. You know, they'll, they'll do Broadway shows, and they'll do standalone chorus concerts, and they do a, a, a much more varied program or, or program throughout the year whereas a group like us we have a very centered focused mission mm-hmm. and that mission sort of distinguishes us and it makes us different from Voci and that's good for both ensembles mm-hmm. because it right. brands us both separately very cool all right well I know that Rachel just told us about a wonderful holiday pops concert coming up but she was focusing on the one that's taking place at Umstead Hall. Mm-hmm. So I understand that there's more than one performance of this and in different locations. What else can we look forward to? There's going to be a concert on the 16th of December in Green um, that is going to uh, involve the Canton Symphony Chorus. We will also have um, a, uh, the Green High School Choir as a um, as a guest, as a part of that concert, too. That will be held at the chapel uh, up in Green. Nice. Now, you wear a lot of hats. I know that this isn't the only thing you do. Tell us about uh, what else you do in our community. Well, I'm the director of choral activities at Walsh University, and so I direct two choirs there, and I have administrative responsibilities at Walsh University, too. Um, as, as chair of Division of Fine and Performing Arts, I actually supervise music, art, art history, drama, museum studies, and some other things, too. Mm. So I, I now have sort of an administrative hat, and then uh, when they let me, I, I get away, and I get to go make, make, go make music. So, <laughs> um, But uh, I still get to direct my two choirs, and that's sort of still the passion of my life and the thing that I really get excited about. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure Walsh has some wonderful Christmas uh, events coming up. Do you want to plug those? Absolutely. We have a concert on Friday, December 4th. We are doing a Christmas Lessons and Carols mm. uh, concert uh, on that date. It's at 7 o'clock. It's a free concert. Um uh, on the campus of Walsh University. And um, we we have built a tradition of doing lessons and carol services, traditional lessons and carol services. And uh, our, our uh, ensembles are known for doing a wide variety of music. We do a lot of traditional uh, classical music, traditional Christmas music, but then we will also throw in African music, and we'll throw in music Mm -hmm. from other cultures, and we'll throw in gospel pieces and spirituals and other contemporary things, and and really diversify um, the experience so that people, uh, no one's going to be bored coming to a Walsh University Mm -hmm. choir concert. We really we really try to mix it up a lot. Absolutely. No, indeed. Won't be bored at all. It's um, pretty exciting, and isn't it amazing for a community of this size to have this many amazing cultural experience. I I just always stand in awe of all the wonderful options to go to to really celebrate the Christmas season. Absolutely. One of the things that those of us who are involved in those performances often lament is that we end up um, booking our own performances at a time where we can't see somebody else's because <laughs> invariably our now this this year uh, Malone's c- concerts and our concerts don't coincide that's, that's great act- and that's actually very unusual so people could actually experience both but usually uh, the first weekend in December is very very crowded the second weekend in de- December is very very crowded but the wonderful news is that the audiences to all of those events are always, very, very robust, and mm-hmm. um, w- there are a lot, a lot of things to choose from. But but people go to all of those events, and and um, we will, we usually have between eight and nine hundred at our concert, and I'm sure that 
Malone's concerts are going to be very well attended as well. Well, particularly since you say that uh, this year they don't conflict. Yes. So people can go hear your the carols and the traditions that you uh, annually do. Mm-hmm. And then I understand that they're going to be doing the Messiah. That's right. So, wow, what a great, perfect, full circle, get it all by going to both of those concerts. Absolutely that sounds true. wonderful. Let's find out more about you, Britt. We're speaking with Britt Cooper. He is um, with the Canton Symphony Chorus. And um, what brought you? What, what's, what's been your story? <laughs> what got you from there to here? Well, I, uh, I actually spent a little bit of my growing up years in this area. I actually went to Lake High School up in Uniontown, Ohio. Um, but I spent most of my young years in the South. My parents grew up, I grew up down there. I grew up down there. And I did all of my music degrees down there. And then when it came time to do the job search that you do when you decide you're going to teach college, you send 50 applications everywhere across the United States in hopes that you might get a couple of interviews. And as, it, as fate would have it, one of the places that, that ended up interviewing me was five minutes from where I went to high school. How perfect. It was completely bizarre. <laughs> and so I now, not only do I, I recruit from the high school that I once attended, but my former high school choir director now sings in my choir. Are you serious? Yeah. She's with the Canton Symphony Chorus. With the Canton Symphony Chorus, yes. Oh, Marissa de Cesare, uh, who was the director at Lake High School, is now singing in my choir. And which I'm sure is, she takes full credit. Uh, she takes all the credit, <laughs> as she should. And um, the, it was a hysterical audition experience. We oh. stared, we stared oh. at each other and went, this is completely wrong. <laughs> I, I should not be auditioning you for anything, but... We got through it, and she's having a great time singing in the choir. Did you have a little fun with her at that audition? Oh, like, sure. oh, I don't know <laughs> if you can quite cut the mustard. Yeah, we uh, we had a good time with it. It was really cool. Now, where in the South did you grow up and go to school? <sighs> I grew up in a. My, I was born in Augusta, Georgia. I spent most of my growing up years in in various parts of North Georgia, Atlanta, Athens. But I also did my degrees at, uh, at larger schools. I did a degree at the University of Alabama, another degree at the University of South Carolina. And um, I did a little bit of teaching down there. I actually taught high school for three years down there before uh, doing my doctorate. So um, I, uh, I, I bounced around quite a bit, um, but uh, have found a very happy home here in, in Northeast mm-hmm. Ohio and uh, am making music in multiple guises and multiple forms yes. all the time everywhere how rewarding is it to be working with young people oh that's the that's the fun part mm-hmm. i just got done doing a high school honor choir where i got to work with about 150 high school kids and uh from seven or eight local uh local schools and um it's energizing i worked with them for eight hours and at the end of it i still had energy to spend and it wasn't because I'm all that healthy or anything else. It's because those kids gave me so much energy. And um, we get that sort of experience when we do these holiday pops concerts because we end up working with other high schools. We're going to be working with Sandy Valley High School and Northwest High School uh, this year. Choirs from those two groups are going to be joining the symphony chorus for this holiday pops concert in Umstadt. And um, that's a lot of fun. It's Mm -hmm. a great opportunity not only to work with them, but it's also an extraordinary opportunity to share the experience of singing with an orchestra, the quality of the Canton Symphony Orchestra. Um, we end up trying to engage as many local schools and as many local choirs as we can in that process. The Canton Symphony Chorus is never quite big enough to do f- major works on our own. We almost always pull in extra uh, other ensembles uh, to collaborate on our larger work. So when we do Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, we're pulling in college choirs. Right. Uh, we did, we used um, Walsh University mm-hmm. and Mount Union last year. Mm-hmm. And a couple of years ago when we did the Mahler Second Symphony, we actually had four college choirs singing with our ensemble. So we had about 250 singers. Mm. So um, we are always looking to collaborate and we're always looking to try to create opportunities for other people, other other young people to have the experience of singing with an orchestra because it's an experience that is hard to describe until you experience it. Um, it, it, it um, you know, these are, these are amateur singers, these are non-professional singers who are engaging in an opportunity to make professional quality music with an orchestra and it's 
just an astounding experience and for them. And no shortage of talent when you consider all the colleges and universities Absolutely. in this area right here in, in this county. Yes, yes. Uh, we have uh, College of Worcester, Mount Union, Malone uh, have all uh, at various points sung with the orchestra. Uh, choruses from Kett have sung with the with the orchestra. Uh, Walsh University has as, as well. And so we've been able to really take advantage of all of those ensembles, but but we've really been able to spread that wealth and 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 get as many we we try we're very careful when we when we're programming holiday pops concerts for example when we use high school choirs to try to reach out geographically to other parts of the area but just engaging different schools we've we've gone south we've gone north uh, we've really uh, tried to create an opportunity for as many high schools as possible to have that experience. Mm -hmm. Well, for your chorus, singing with the Canton Symphony Orchestra, now we don't want to miss any of these uh, wonderful programs that you've got on tap for us. So remind mm -hmm. us, what are the dates, what's coming up, so we can not miss any. We have a concert on Friday the 4th of March. Uh, that is going to be a chorus alone concert at Christ Presbyterian Church in downtown Ooh. Canton. Mm -hmm. um, we are still working on the rep for that concert, but it will probably be a lot of a cappella literature. We might take advantage of the beautiful organ in that space and, and do some things uh, that are appropriate to that. And then at the end of April, I, I'm off the top of my head, I'm going to struggle, but I believe it may be April the 24th, we're doing a Masterworks concert with... Mm. Uh, the chorus, along with the Walsh University chamber singers. And those two groups together will sing two pieces. We're doing a piece called uh, Lux Eterna by Morton Lauridsen, which is a contemporary work, which is absolutely gorgeous, of about 25 minutes. And then we're going to do um, the uh, Polovetsian dances of Alexander Borodine. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And of course, uh the dates real quickly coming up of all the holiday pops. Uh, December 6th, Sunday, December 6th at 3 o'clock at Umstadt, mm -hmm. and uh, December 16th in Green. Wonderful. You can also go to cantonsymphony.org. Will they find your information there as well? Yes, they will. Britt Cooper, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for joining us for our community.